the current mayor of New Orleans at the time of the flood, what he came up with is the idea of if we can demonstrate to these people that culture means tourism dollars for the city or for the state, then they might support this. And it's a great argument if you're attempting to talk to someone who otherwise is disinclined to support culture, but it's problematic in another way because it leads to a kind of commodification. It leads to this idea that our culture is important because it can be sold. So it is no longer important that you like to have red beans and rice on Monday as is a tradition, or you like to have second line parades on Sundays as is a tradition. What is important is that somebody from somewhere else will come and pay for a hotel room, a plane ticket, some meals, and some tourist gifts in the course of seeing you do these things. And in that way, culture's impact can be measured. The problem is that that's exactly what leads to caricature. Caricature meaning that those things that you do naturally, that you suddenly emphasize because someone else expects you to do them or is willing to pay you to do them. So the fact that you like to sing and dance is irrelevant. The important thing is that someone wants to pay you to sing and dance at an appointed time, at an appointed place. And that's been the great fear about the New Orleans recovery, that we'd end up being sort of a disnified version of ourselves, that we're so busy trying to be like we're supposed to be that we're no longer like what we were. What the Chamber of Commerce will tell you is that New Orleans is hot again. People are moving there. We've got all these young people moving, creating new restaurants, creating new ideas, being in an infusion of intellectual capital that we hadn't had in several generations. But ultimately, the question is, whether or not this new New Orleans, this recovered New Orleans, retained those aspects of its character that were so important, not only to we New Orleanians, but indeed to the world.